Hello and welcome to this live interaction with me Ashish Parekh and today I'll be speaking about Solar Cycle 25 which NASA has now confirmed has begun. For over 4 billion years the sun's light and heat have played a major role in influencing atmospheric and weather conditions on earth. However, the energy emitted by the sun is not constant and it increases and decreases periodically. This periodic variation which occurs in a 11 year solar cycle has a major impact on large weather systems and also patterns on earth such as polar winds and all of their uh, all of the systems that we usually look at and now scientists at nasa have confirmed that the sun is officially nine months into a new solar weather cycle and the new activity phase is called the solar cycle 25 and will peak in 2025 but before that this will generally be a less active cycle which is pretty similar to solar cycle 24 which ended in december itself now this is expected to continue until about 2030 and one way to track all of these solar cycles is by counting the number of sunspots the beginning of a solar cycle, for example, is a solar minimum or when the sun has the least sunspots. Over time, solar activity and the number of sunspots increases and the middle of solar cycle is the solar maximum or when the sun has the most sunspots. As the cycle ends, it fades back to the solar minimum and also then a new cycle begins. So this is what exactly happens as far as the solar cycle is concerned and scientists have now come out and confirmed that solar cycle 25 has begun. And to speak more about this and give us an insight as to what it exactly means and if, if uh, as per several reports, like a lot of people have been saying, do we have to worry about our communication satellites and various other uh, atmospheric activities being disturbed by this new solar cycle? I have our expert for the day, Mr. Jayant murthy who is a senior professor at the indian institute of astrophysics first of all professor murthy thank thanks a lot for your time today thank you for joining us my first question to you of course as a layman is what exactly is a solar cycle and how does it affect our daily lives okay so a solar cycle is just when the sun's uh, magnetic field changes every 11 years the sun's north becomes the south and the south becomes the north and after another 11 years, it goes back to the uh, normal scheme of things. But uh, so what happens is that uh, in, in different, at uh, different solar cycles, there's different levels of activity. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have more activity and sometimes you have less activity. And uh, when there's more activity, the Earth's atmosphere puffs out a little and it affects satellites. Or maybe there's more storms that... Uh, that affect communications to satellites. When there's less activity, the whole uh, atmosphere is quieter. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Dr. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Muthi, also given the fact that we have uh, a lot of reliance on satellites and other communication channels, like one scientist once uh, said, we are never underprepared for our space missions. We are always, uh, we are always, uh, you know, under undermining the effects of solar radiations and all of these different effects that come into the picture while going to space. So. As, as solar cycle changes, how does it affect solar radiations? And also given the fact that now satellite communication is probably one of the most uh, you know, crucial ways of communicating across the world, how much of uh, understanding a solar cycle does uh, you know, assume importance given the fact that we need to understand what sort of activity is going on as far as the sun is concerned so that our, uh, our communication satellites are also prepared and the preparation leading into different launches is also uh, you know, taken care of? Well, of course, you need to know uh what the uh, level of solar radiation is. So it's good to have models. It's good to understand what's going on. At the same time, uh, we we don't normally prepare satellites for uh, outstanding solar events. Okay. If there's a big solar flare that comes and hits the Earth directly, mm -hmm. then it'll knock out half the satellites out there. Yeah. And there's not much we can do about it. Yeah. So good to know. Maybe you can use it for prediction, but a satellite is there for for many years, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a cost trade off. 
also also there is a lot of misconception about how a uh, solar cycle actually uh, affects the environment back on earth because of course you've got a lot of theories coming in as well and uh, you know a lot of uh, researchers publishing their papers about how solar cycles could have different sort of effects on the environment as someone who has been uh, in the know how for a long time now uh, how much of you how much of it do you think is just over hype and how much of it do you think is actually practical now you know given given the fact that a layman is reading about solar cycle how much do does he uh, have to believe that it affects the environment back on earth and how much of it is just hype which is created around solar cycles and the solar flares and the solar activities that uh, you know the vagaries of solar activities if i can call that no let me say first of all that uh, if you're talking about climate change yeah we know that climate change is is related to uh, uh, mostly carbon dioxide yeah you can plot it over 40000 years and you see that the uh, temperature tracks exactly with carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So the sun does have an effect. Mm -hmm. Obviously it has an effect. It's, it's our main source of heat and light. Mm -hmm. But the uh, uh, effects of solar radiation on the climate are much less than uh, anything that we're doing ourselves. Okay. so you know that is one that is one question that a lot of people actually had regarding solar cycles because you know there is a lot of misconception that is also created and also given the fact that a lot of information these days is spread across social media sites wherein uh, you know hype is created about, around any event that takes place be it uh, 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 an event in space or anything that's happening on earth uh, you know all of that hype constantly contrib contributes to the misinformation as well also one thing that even i was uh, extremely curious about is is the duration of solar cycles fixed you know uh, have we had uh, very longer uh, solar cycles in history or is it always uh, somewhere around 11 years and what's the what, what is the reason why it lasts 11 years you know why not 15 why not 20 or why not 5 any science behind that it's all related to the internal dynamics of the sun mm -hmm. and uh, yes people have models for it people make predictions for what the solar cycle will be so why is it 11 it's just a accident of the sun's formation okay if the sun were some maybe some slightly different uh, structure maybe it would be 15 years mm -hmm. But and it's constant it's it's always about 11 years nice okay and also uh, if you could just shed a bit more light about sunspots because obviously uh, the 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 you know the entire solar cycle and its uh, effect can be measured using the number of sunspots as it increases and decreases so what exactly is a sunspot and how do we understand uh, the nature of sunspots and how exactly does it affect uh, the you know the quality of solar cycle and the duration of solar cycle sunspots are more a uh, a symptom than a cause of solar uh, of, of the solar cycle okay so what the, the way that they form is that uh, there's what's called convection cells in the sun mm -hmm. that is the hot air rise the hot gases in the sun rise mm -hmm. and the cool gases sink so a sunspot happens when the cool gases can't sink back okay and you form a little cell where you don't have uh, uh, you don't have that convection mm -hmm. so that sunspot itself is cooler mm -hmm. than the rest of the sun which is why it looks darker okay the hotter it is the brighter it is the cooler it is the darker it is okay. and it turns out that uh, magnetic fields come out of and into sunspots yeah and uh, before we wrap this up professor uh, just just to give us uh, give our uh, viewers an idea about uh, how much of a difference can they see during a solar maximum and a solar minimum is it noticeable from earth or is it again something that uh, shows up in the readings itself well don't don't do this with your naked eye but if you look at the sun with a good pair of protective goggles mm -hmm. you will see many more sunspots in a, a high activity solar in a, in a high solar activity region okay i mean that time clearly okay clearly that is one thing that a lot of people have to remember and also uh, thanks a lot uh, professor for joining us for this uh, quick live interaction about solar cycle 25 something that a lot of people were asking us about and were curious given the fact that nasa had given out uh, you know the given out reports that uh, solar cycle 25 has officially begun we are 9 months into that and also it could have a major impact on environment and, and, and other uh, other patterns as well weather patterns as well and clearly a lot of people were excited and curious as to what exactly is the solar cycle and that was 
the basis of our live interaction and as clearly uh, Professor Jain Moti has clarified, it is something that again uh, is a natural process, not something that we need to be uh, particularly worried about. It is something that happens naturally and it's something that repeats itself every 11 years on an average. So that was a quick live interaction about Solar Cycle 25 and all that you needed to know about it. Do let us know what you think about the video and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to News9 Digital. Thanks for watching.